Hello, and thank you for watching Guitar How To's. Seems like we have new gear today. Beautiful. Oh, really nice. The frets feel great. Binding all the way around. Nice. The back, beautiful piece of wood here. Oh, man, that's gorgeous. And the neck, beautiful, very nice. Wow. Wow. I'm impressed. Here's what I have laid out for this project. This is a styrofoam block that's uh, carved out a little bit and uh, put a piece of cloth over that. That's for the neck, neck rest. Um, we have various size screwdrivers, uh, socket wrench, a pair of diagonals, clip the strings off. I'm going to put new strings on, string stretcher, uh, a winder, of course, uh, uh, metric and imperial size uh, Allen wrenches or hex wrenches, if you want to call them that. Um, this I made uh, out of some cardboard. You may have seen it on a previous video. I'm going to use that to protect the uh, fret board itself while I uh, polish the frets. And to polish the frets, I have a couple of grits here. 5,000 and 1,500. I checked out the frets on this guitar already. They're a little rough, but they're not that bad. I am not going to be, um, you know, leveling them uh, with my normal block of wood that you've seen on other videos. A uh, set of strings, my sheet here that I use to keep track of what I've done on what guitar. Uh, I have a jar, a little jar here that I keep the uh, rivets on the, on the ends of the strings, in case you need those at some point. Very rarely do you use these, but you know, if you have, um, let's say you're going to do a, a, a top wrap, you may want to use these for spacers. Anyway, um, of course, this is to write with, of course. <laughs> um, tape measure, we'll measure the guitar. Extra pick here. Glue stick, because I glue this on the back of the uh, string uh, package. You put that in the case. Uh, this is a cutout, cardboard cutout from a cereal box to protect the uh, body of the guitar, which we'll get to. Uh, toothpicks and Vaseline to put in the nut. Uh, various uh, various kinds of cloths. I don't mix my cloths, uh, so if I use uh, a polish, I keep that polish on that rag. I don't use the same rag, let's say, for lemon oil, which I have here, lemon oil. So that's why the various cloths are around here. So let's get started. Okay, here is the initials for this guitar company, IYV. It's not IV. Uh, a couple of things I've noticed. Um, there's kind of like a dust in this guitar. You see, see that coming off? And you'll really see it. Let me go down here. You'll really see it on the pickup. Let me see. Come over to this one. I already touched these two. That's how I know that. Look at that. So, I don't know. I assume, I don't know what that is, but I assume it's on the whole guitar. There's one flaw I found on the cosmetics of this guitar, and there's a dent right here. I don't know if you can see that. I, hope you can. I think you can see it. Uh, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty deep. So, I thought about returning the guitar, um, but after reading reviews, um, I think it was on Amazon. Uh, you know, other people have gotten the guitars and they found other issues. 
all seemingly minor, uh, but I thought, gosh, if I get another one, I thought about getting another one and then returning <laughs> the worst one of the two, uh, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't want to go through the hassle of, of uh, returning it, but not that it's a big deal, but I'm not going to do it. Why? Because there's no assurance that the next one I would get wouldn't have a flaw somewhere else, especially when reading what other people have found. When taking the strings off, this will be very loose, so I don't want to scratch in the guitar, so I found a piece of cardboard just to lay there for now. Now that the strings are off, just move this back. I'll be polishing the guitar now so I have great access here. Next thing I'll do is take off these plastic things, if uh, plastic protective sheets. If... The other thing I wanted to just point out while I have the strings off is look at this wood. In their ad, they say it's rosewood. I, it's If it's rosewood, which, look, I'm not going to doubt them too much. I'm just going to say it's this is really beautiful. Uh, I'm not used to seeing such granular appearance on, on most rosewoods. But again, I'm not going to purport to be a rosewood expert. There's different rosewoods from different countries. I'll just take them at their at face value, at their word. Here's what the guitar looks like without the pickguard on. I might leave that off. I do on many guitars because I like to have the wood show off. I'm, I'm a little disappointed about that, but you know, you can't, you can't help it. Um, it is what it is. That's, that's enough of that. I don't blame anybody for that. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. It's just the way that it is. Uh, the pickguard does have uh, protective uh, plastic on it. And what I what I'll do is I'll take the screws that that the uh, that attach the pickguard to the guitar, and I'll tape them on the back of the pickguard. Right, while I have the strings off, I want to just go around to each of these nuts here. Just sure that they're snug. You don't need to you don't need to over tighten these. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, doing semi crack the uh, finish, so you just want to have, make sure that they're on there nice and snug. They're not bad, by the way. The way they were, the way they were um, came from the factory. Very nice. Also, uh, on the sides of these keys are are um, get over here are little screws. This, uh, these screws um, regulate how tense these feel, how stiff they feel, or how loose they feel, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, so I go by feel, because I don't know any other way to do it. <laughs> I just usually just go through all the tuners and find one that I like, if there is one that I like, and then make the other ones match it. Uh, by uh, loosening or tightening the screw and you want to be very careful use the right size screwdriver these these uh, these uh, slots strip very easily now I taped down my protective cardboard here that's from cereal boxes made this out of cereal boxes too and let's see if this fits this should be the same scale as this guitar. Why did I make this? Well, I wanted a quick way to protect the uh, fretboard wood without having to tape up the entire uh, neck of the guitar. So this fits pretty good. Matter of fact, it fits, period. Not even pretty good. So now I can take... Um, you know, some of my very fine grit. Uh, again, I'm just going to polish these today. I'm not, I'm not, you know, crowning or leveling frets or anything like that. Uh, they seem to be pretty good when I gave the guitar first run play. So I'll take some very fine grit, uh, uh, sandy block over here, 1500. I'll start with 1500, then I'll move to 5000. And that should be enough. Just want to knock off some of the roughness on the frets. That's it. Although I started some of this off camera, uh, all I'm doing is very lightly, uh, I, you know, I can't hold everything down. I'm holding the camera as well as uh, everything else. So. <laughs> okay, um, holding the cardboard down with my left hand, my right hand here has the sponge, and I'm just lightly rubbing, uh, rubbing back and forth over the frets, making sure that the cardboard is covering up the wood. 
And uh, I count. I did 20, 20 passes. So when I, let's say the sponge is this long, so these frets get 20, then I go to the next group, they get 20. That way I'm not overdoing any one particular area of frets. Now I'll move on to 5,000 grit. I'll use the prior sponge as kind of a sandy block. You can use a piece of wood if you like. But since I have the sponge available, I'm just gonna use that. So I'll do the same motion and I'll probably do 30 uh, this time. I like to increase the number of rubs as the uh, grit uh, decreases or if you want numerically increases. Numerical increases means that it's more fine. So that's, that's how I do it. Very well, this concludes 5,000 and you can see the frets are shining. They won't blind you. I mean, you can keep going on and on with this kind of work. I don't want to. I'm just looking for something that's smoother to the touch that takes off the, you know, the little bit of um, uh, filings that were, that seem to be on here. And they weren't that bad. Uh, but anyway, they're smoother now and that's, uh, that's all I'm concerned about. I did notice when I removed the strings that the uh, low E string here was pretty tight inside the slot. So I don't know. I think there were tens on here. I'm almost sure there were tens. Maybe these slots were cut for nines. I don't know. But I'm going to check the depth now while I have the strings off. All right. The way I like to check the nut height is to use this tape method. It's not very official, I'm afraid. Uh, I think I put 14 layers down. I count them as I go along. But more important than counting them is how do I know when I'm got the right height? Well, for me, I go by how this feels across the first fret. I want this to be above the first fret. Of course, not by a lot. So this is probably one or two tapes uh, depth uh, thicknesses above the fret. And that way, when I move this over, get the tape off here all right when I move this over to the edge of the nut like this now this is going to act as my stopgap or barrier for files or whatever else you may use to adjust these slots that way I know that the the lowest point of these slots is just above the height of the first fret. So to protect the finish of the guitar here up by the headstock, uh, I've taken that piece of cardboard that I used down here to protect the body of the guitar, remember? And just taped it around here. And I always put two layers of tape whenever I put this down because <laughs> If you're working with something and you don't realize that you're scraping something away, let's say I was rubbing a file or something this way and it hit this piece of tape, by the time that tape breaks, if I had one layer only, it's like too late. It's probably already scratched the wood underneath. So I use two layers so I can at least have an opportunity to see uh, the tape, tape getting hit. Now, oh, I keep little things like this let me see, get a camera on here. These are uh, little strips of sandpaper that I put inside a tiny manila, you know, small manila envelope. Because you never know when you'll need them again, and I don't want to cut a fresh piece of uh, sandpaper every time I need a small strip. So, I already have a small strip here. I folded it in half. This is not an official way to cut slots. Not. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it. But the, since this is my guitar, <laughs> I can be a little more liberal here with this. You want to go at, you know, kind of rock back and forth a bit, like I'm doing. Now this, this slot is pretty wide. So now I want to stop periodically and see if I'm getting, let me get the pointer here, if I'm getting this, this line 
that means that the slot, you know, the sandpaper is touching the uh, top of the tape, which means that that nut slot is a good depth. You also want to sight this way underneath the paper, usually put a light on this side over here so I can see underneath. Let's see if I can do that with this light. So I can see if there's any light showing underneath between the bottom of the sandpaper and the top of the tape. And there is no light showing that I can see. Hopefully you don't see any either. So that tells me that that slot is done. Let me move on to this next one. They're probably okay. But I like my action really low because I'm, well, I find it very comfortable, of course, but I'm, I'm a light player. And I admittedly am not a very fast player. So if I have the string height higher, now granted the tone is much better when the strings are higher. Um, but for me, the millisecond or so it takes me to press the string down, slows me down even more. There's so many great guitar players out there. I wouldn't say I'm one of them. I would say I'm okay. I wouldn't say I'm a beginner, but I'm certainly not a shredder. I always admired that, but I don't have any use for it in what I play. You know, I usually play songs, you know, like pop songs. And it's hard for me to fit a shredding line inside those songs, so I never really... I never really developed it. More of a, I guess I'm more of a blues player. More of a blues influenced player. That's a better way of saying it. Okay, these are looking pretty good. I've been watching. I've been watching here as I'm talking. And I don't think I have a set of fret files. I don't think I do. So I resort to some of these home remedy methods, which I will tell you is not the best way of doing it. It's not. But again, since this is my guitar, and it's a cheap guitar, <laughs> I don't mind... I don't mind uh, addressing some of these issues with these less conventional methods. Some people who are luthiers and watch this channel, I think some of them have a conniption sometimes. And, you know, hey, that's all right. But I always say there's more than one way to skin a cat. I would not go around advertising this is how you uh, cut nuts slot depth though. If you want your if you want your the width of your uh, slots to be what they quote unquote should be, you probably should not use this method. I'm doing it a quick and dirty way right here, you know. See what I mean? This would, would have rubbed against here eventually if I didn't watch out, which I didn't put any protection down. Put that cardboard down there. This slot is so thin, it, the paper's just coming right out of it. And I mean, just leave it there anyway. But anyway, you see the uh, lines here, right? You see the lines here? That means that the, the, the tape has been hitting, the, uh, the sandpaper has been hitting the top of the tape. So I'm going to call that a day. Again, um, if it ever needs another adjustment at some point, I don't believe it will, but if it ever does, um, I'll just do it with the next string change or something, unless it's really bad. But okay, let's, uh, let's go on to the next step. 
All right, now before I polish the top of the guitar, I happen to have a clean um, microfiber cloth. I like these cloths. And I'm just going to give this a little dab of uh, lemon oil. Hmm. A little test spot here. Wow, that's interesting. It's not absorbing like those ones usually does. Now you only need like a little drop of this. I can put this here in the camera. Little drop uh, where my fingertip is. And then just spread it out. Because this will spread. And you may be able to see this on the camera. Hope you can. That the wood does get richer looking. Darker. Don't put a lot of this on. I've covered some of this in other videos. But the fear is if you put too much on, it absorbs into the wood and then can actually, at least I've been told this by a real guitar person, another guitar tech guy, that it can lift your frets up. Now that would wreak havoc on your, uh, on your fretboard. So very sparingly, very, very, very little. That's enough. I'm just going to use one drop, that's all. I'm just going to go through each slot here just to make sure this kind of even. Love the inlays, by the way, on this guitar. Very, very nice. And I'm not sure if it really is <laughs> that much more difficult to do. I guess dots would be the, the least expensive way labor-wise to put them in. I don't know. But I suppose if you have uh, the correct CNC machine, it'll just cut these squares right out. And then you lay in your, um, your inlays and glue them in. So, you know, I mean, sometimes when I see these very high-priced guitars, of which I have some, I may add. Okay, so I'm not down on them. I'm just saying that <laughs> you got to wonder sometimes. I mean, they're, they're giving you a sales story that, oh, it's got these nice block inlays. Yeah, well, it probably didn't cost more than a few cents uh, to put these in, beginning to end. You know, so the dots are nice. They're traditional. But, you know, you'll find them sometimes on these, you know, three, thirty-five hundred, three thousand, five thousand $3,000, $5,000 and up guitars. And here, this guitar was 200 bucks, <laughs> And it's, it's 2020, in case anybody watches this video 25,000 years from now. So, you know, $200 guitar. And it has this so-called workmanship on it. Here's what I've taken off so far. Kind of makes me wonder about... It kind of makes me question why should I, I guess, overpay for something that may have less on it. Now, I will say this on the higher-end guitars, uh, to be very fair, you'll very rarely have any fret work to be done on those. Very rarely, very, very rarely, in my opinion, anyway. Um, also, if you're going to rub your frets, this is important because somebody asked me if I would do a video on a Les Paul setup. Well, the answer is yes. However, remember the Gibsons have the binding going over the edge of the frets. So if you do what I did, which is rub back and forth on there, you run the risk of damaging those. So I would not use my method, if you would, on a guitar that has binding that goes over the edges of the frets. It works well with 99% of the, of the guitars out there. I think Gibson's the only one that does that, if I, if I know, if I'm, if I'm correct. I have not seen that on other guitars anyway. So um, 
I want to be, you know, just be mindful of that. You don't want to go doing this on your, you know, expensive Les Paul and then find out that you knock the nubs off or something, knock these, uh, you know, the, um, the binding off the edge of the fret. So anyway, okay, so now what will I do next? I will uh, polish the guitar body. I will polish the headstock and uh, then I'll put strings on and then I'll flip the guitar over and polish the back of the guitar. While I'm here, um, excuse me one second here, let me just get around these. I hope you can tell I polished the guitar. Maybe you can, I don't know, maybe you can't. But while I'm here, I want to take some Vaseline. This is not necessary to do this, but I do it. So once it's done, it's done. I take the studs here that I unscrewed. I put a little bit of Vaseline on the threads down the bottom because this will have a tendency to travel up to the top. And as I screw this in, don't need a whole lot. Again, it's not necessary to do this part, but I do. Okay. As I've said on other videos, I usually always go backward till I hear that click. There we have it. Counterclockwise. There it is. Meaning there's the little click, which tells me that the thread found its home. All the way down, and then back it up, back, back it back up again. Now, too, while I have the Vaseline out, I'll just take a little bit on my fingertip and go back and forth and let it fill in the slot. And then I'll take usually a tissue and just uh, wipe off the excess. Before turning the guitar over, I've taken again that small piece of cardboard I used before, placed it under here, taped this down. I've left the bridge off on purpose. And now, put the cloths here. There we go. But here we are. And now I want to place the guitar, the guitar knobs right there. Beautiful. There we go. And it's secure. So now I will polish the back. There's a few blemishes, nothing earth shattering, nothing that rubbing won't get out. <laughs> and after that Travis Bean, you know I'm no stranger to rubbing. 
but today I don't feel like doing all that rubbing. So <laughs> next time I have the guitar out and when I have some more time, I'm a little pressed for time today. Um, <laughs> I'll take a, a deeper look at it. So let me show to you the marks here. I'm trying to get in close here. I'll put my finger on the mark. It's right here. So there you go. It's in the wood. Well, it's in the finish. It's in the gloss, I guess. Who knows? That can be cut. That can come out. And the other one <clears throat> that I noticed is up in this area here. I have to get the gloss just right. Right here you go. A little fog there. And did I see another one? Maybe right here. So, you know, minor. Okay, when I put the bridge back on, this is quite loose. I'd like to keep these up a little bit more than necessary. For now. Because once the strings are on here, the tension's here, it's easier to screw this down than it is to try to go up. All right, the strings are on, and as I was putting it on, we'll notice that this bracket here is bent inward. See this one straight out here? Now, they do both curve. When they come up here, underneath here, they curve a little bit. So they then come out kind of like straight on this end. But this one's bent a little, <laughs> a little too much. So again, next time I change the strings, I'll take a pair of pliers and bend this back a little bit. But just another thing to, you know, watch out for. Uh, this is uh, the kind of thing that, you know, happens either at the manufacturing plant or, or in shipment. Now comes the fun part. Let's take a look at this action. I'm trying to get this to focus here, not somewhere else. Okay, so we have the string, and this is the low E string, and I'm at the seventh fret here. And obviously that's pretty high. But that's not the first thing I want to check necessarily. I want to take my first finger, it's off camera, and press down on the, you know, behind the first fret. And take my pinky and behind the uh, 22nd fret. And now I want to see how much gap is here. Okay, so we have some gap here, right? And that's not too bad, but I like mine closer. So this means that I go over to the truss rod. So let me get the right tool out and uh, turn that maybe a quarter turn and see what happens. All right, I used a 532nd wrench and turned it one quarter of a turn. Now that, that's close. That's pretty much how I like it. Pretty much. Do another eighth of a turn and see what happens. Don't turn these fast. And don't be rough with them. Now, what can happen, let me show you. Let me back up with the camera here. Now, when we check the height up here, it's really quite high. So it's not the truss rod, it's the bridge. So let's do what we can to lower this. Remember, remember I kept it up high on purpose. So this has wheels as well as the screws. There we go to use a cloth for a couple of reasons. It gives me a better grip and does less damage to my fingertips. Okay, now comes the part where I'll do this off camera because I have to turn the guitar, you know, upright and uh, play it. And then I'll just keep adjusting this. It's up or down, up or down, up or down. Hit or miss, as far as I'm concerned. That's how I do it. I'm not saying you have to do it that way. Like I said, if you want to measure, that's fine. Help yourself. But I like the way my guitars play, and that's all that really matters, right? 
Okay, um, and the last thing I will do is take off this and give you a sound sample. Well, just got done playing it, and let me just share this with you. And I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this, but this is the best playing guitar without addressing frets, other than just me polishing them, that was nothing um, that I've ever had. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. No buzzing. And here is my, if you want a measuring instrument, this is a Fender Extra Heavy Pick. And this is what I use right here. I lay it across the 11th and 12th fret. And when, when it touches the, the string, that's the height I like. Now, I'm going to say this. Oh, by the way, I like it on both sides that way. I didn't mean to ignore that side. Um, I could probably get this lower, you know, <laughs> but I mean, how low, how low do you want to go? Right. As the song says, the old song, uh, I am not going to take it any lower. I did, uh, I did off camera. I did, uh, lower the bridge just a hair. I think probably a quarter of a turn each. When you get this close to being uh, set up the way you like it, uh, the bridge is going to be extremely sensitive. So one couple, a uh, couple of little turns here, or not even a turn. I mean, I'm just talking about a little, you know, a couple little threads here moving. It, it's going to make a big difference. So I am pleased as punch, as they say. Uh, this is, uh, I'm actually shocked. Uh, I didn't get any buzz here on the second fret here, the E. Usually get it right there when, uh, uh, what am I going to say, when the truss rod is back a little too far, but. This is amazing because I've done the same, I've done that same tap test and uh, with other guitars and I still get a buzz here on the second fret. And sometimes I have to, you know, lift up a little bit on the truss rod, loosen it a little bit so the neck comes up just a hair. Either that or I get into, you know, leveling frets. They're not even leveling really. It's adjusting the frets according to the distance from the nut down to the bridge. That's what you're really doing. Now, some guitars I've had set up and they've been played like butter, but maybe there was maybe on the high E string, for example, it was like kind of like quote unquote fretting out, so to speak. It was fret buzzing up in here and I had to go one fret at a time, one fret at a time until finally that was removed. I haven't had to do anything on this instrument. Nothing, nothing. This is, I, I, I'm, I'm just shocked. I'm shocked at how great this uh, this neck is so straight. It's the, the 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 best easiest setup I've ever had on a guitar. Normally they they become you know kind of a nightmare. <laughs> one thing after another, one thing after another. But this one, no. I can deal with the cosmetic issues. I'm glad I didn't buy another one because uh, I, as I said earlier in the video, I probably would have other cosmetic issues with that one. So again, next time I change the strings, I'll straighten out this. I'll uh, dig more into um, some of the uh, areas that need a little bit more polishing on it. Uh, get some of those marks out of there. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll just take off the uh, last thing I'll do. Take off the uh, plastic uh, that's covering the pickup covers and uh, plug her in. I did check the intonation. I did use this tuner. And it was spot on, spot on. Didn't have to change a thing. That's another amazing thing. Uh, Cause what I expect on low end guitars is these bridges are already adjusted as far forward or backward as they're gonna go. And they need to be adjusted more to be intonated perfectly. And you can't do it. I guess when they drill the holes and, and, and place the bridge in, they're off by a little bit. There's still room left on these, but I didn't, I didn't touch a thing. I didn't touch anything. They're perfectly, perfectly intonated. 12th fret harmonic is spot on. I did the, first I did the open string, then I did the 12th fret harmonic, and then I, and then I fretted it. And it was perfect. Uh, and I did it with a machine. So, uh, again, it's something else I'm just very happy about.
Thank you.